Not for the first time, ANU Vice-Chancellor Ian Young has backed down on a tough decision that had alarmed, distressed and angered many in the community. And while there was a sense of relief with today's decision to guarantee previous levels of student tuition, many are tonight questioning the management skills of the Vice-Chancellor. Professor Young joins me now in the 7.30 studio. Professor Young, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Ross. You stand accused tonight of causing unnecessary heartache in the community. How would you answer that? I think it's really important for people to understand exactly what we've proposed here. We're faced with a situation where our music school, with the mode of delivery it currently has, is simply not financially sustainable. We need to find innovative ways to be able to continue to provide music education for our students. And so we've proposed a, a, what a, quite a radical change to the music program. Was that an ambit claim? Was that an ambit claim? And our new program guarantees a number of things. It guaranteed that students would still be doing performance as part of their music programs. It guaranteed that there would be one-to-one -one education. However, the thing that people con were concerned about was that perhaps it didn't have enough one-to-one -one education in the program. And so today, uh, Chris Peters from the ACT uh, Chamber of Commerce has come forward and suggested that it may be possible to raise uh, external donations to be able to fund additional one-to-one -one education. Because this model is very viable, it's possible to scale it in this way. And so we can relatively easily increase the amount of one-to-one -one education and address those issues that people had. But was your original proposal an ambit claim in any way? Absolutely not. We've put forward an innovative proposal. And today, uh, Chris Peters, as I said, has come forward with, I think, a very good solution so that we can address one of the major concerns that people have. So why didn't you go down this path before? Chris Peters was so angry about the way that this was handled that he stormed off the board. Well, Chris has come forward with a, an innovative solution, so we've been able to use that. Yeah, but why wasn't this, why wasn't this solution talked about five months ago, a year ago, whenever the problems were first mooted? Well, one of the things about going out and talking to the community about raising awareness uh, is that people come forward with interesting ways to solve problems. And I think one of the things that has, as a result of the, the passion which has clearly been there in the community, is now we've got an opportunity to address a number of issues. Not just the issues with the ANU School of Music, but also the broader issues uh, around music in the ACT, around things like the Campus Symphony Orchestra, for instance. But Chris Peters is suggesting that if you had, have come to, if you had gone to the board way back when, and raise these concerns, he would have suggested to you exactly the same thing that has now been agreed to today, would have eliminated all that heartache. Uh, I don't think it would have, Ross, because had we simply had our existing model for music education, you wouldn't be looking at raising a few hundred thousand dollars to be able to give the additional education. You'd be looking at raising three million dollars recurrent funding to be able to do that. So you need to move to the new model. And moving to the new model is the thing which people have been concerned about. Yes, but he says he's quite willing to try and go out there and raise, well, he says, $2 million from mm -hmm. the community, and he thinks he can do it. My That's question, right. again, I keep asking the question, why didn't you do this in the first place? All these students who had a 24-hour protest, you know, you've had students who are crying about their future, you've had people in the community who are shocked and who think the ANU's um, reputation has been trashed. Mm. Ross, you've got to appreciate we are still doing some quite radical things in terms of changing the program. And let me explain why it's necessary to do that. A number of people have said to me, the ANU, music's important, the ANU should simply fund it at the levels that are required. And I think it's really important for people to understand how funding comes to universities like the ANU. We receive funding for each individual student in their disciplines. And as it happens, it costs us almost twice as much to fund music as we receive from the Commonwealth Government. So if we want to keep that situation going, then that money has to come from other students, from students doing history or English or science. And in your program last week, you showed the wonderful uh, learning environment within music, and it is wonderful. But I need to go to a science student sitting in a first year class of 150 and say, it's your money that we're mm. using to subsidise that wonderful environment. And I think people appreciate that, but what they don't appreciate is the way that you've gone about this and the way you went about your decisions earlier this year with restructuring mm. the ANU. And people are now asking, are you up to the job? Are you managing this properly? Mm. Look, we're going through a whole range of change management issues at the present time, uh, and these are always difficult. But the important thing about them is to actually go and talk to people about what's happening. 
my management style is one of being consultative, of going out and talking to the community, talking to the ANU community, and we did that uh, earlier in the year about major restructuring, and I think we've got a very good outcome for that. And here's a situation where we've done exactly the same thing. We've gone out there, we've put forward an innovative proposal, and we've got some very innovative ways of solving that. And I think that's a very positive thing to do. But some might suggest when you get people accusing you of mismanaging the issue and of trashing the reputation of the ANU that maybe your management skills may be lacking. Well, look, I think we'll, we'll see the outcome uh, in the future. Uh, my view is, as I've said before, we've had some really challenging issues. This is not the first time we've been here. This happened in 2004 and 2008. And I think because of the approach we're using now, for the first time, we've actually got a viable solution which can not only ensure that we've got a viable ANU School of Music, but if we harness the, the uh, passion that exists now, we may well be able to also put in place a sustainable Canberra Symphony Orchestra. And that will be an extremely good outcome for the ACT and one it has never had before. Professor Ian Young, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ross.